Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing circadian clocks. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing mammalian circadian clocks, and we've discussed that the main one, okay, the one that is best understood, uh, involves um, a transcriptional translational feedback loop, and is very, very analogous to that transcriptional translational feedback loop that we saw was present in Drosophila cells. Okay, right. Uh, so, we've seen that uh, this circadian clock involves these period and cryptochrome proteins going up and down on a 24-hour basis, basically. Okay, and when uh, this circadian clock is actually in tune with the light-dark cycles, then it should be the case that cryptochrome and period are at their lowest during midnight. Okay, now I'll just get the graph back. So they're at their lowest at midnight, and then they rise throughout the morning period, from 0 o'clock in the morning to midday, okay? And they reach their peak at midday, and then from midday to midnight, they then fall back down, okay? Now, we've seen that the way that that occurs is that if we start at midnight, 0 a.m. in the morning, we know that we have these uh, BMAL1 in blue and then clock or MPAS2 there in green, heterodimers. Okay, and they are free when the period and cryptochrome levels are very low at 0 a.m. in the morning. Okay, and they are then free to bind to E boxes in the gene control regions of certain genes. And these E boxes are found in the gene control regions of the three different types of period protein and the two different types of cryptochrome protein. Okay, and therefore, from 0 a.m. in the morning to uh, midday, what will be happening is you'll be getting the transcription of these uh, period and cryptochrome genes, and therefore, period and cryptochrome levels within the cell will be going up and up in the cytoplasm. Okay, we've then discussed that there is a huge amount of faffing to get period cryptochrome heterodimers into the nucleus, okay? Uh, so, there's a lot of faff with actually forming heterodimers here, okay, in the cytoplasm, and then there's a lot of faff when getting them into the nucleus, and this, we think, involves the having to be lots of little post-translational modifications occur to the period and cryptochrome proteins to get them to heterodimerize firstly, okay? We also think then that to get the period cryptochrome heterodimers into the nucleus, it involves further post-translational modifications, and we don't really understand that at the moment. What we do know is two of the enzymes, which are both kinase enzymes, which seem to be important in producing post-translational modifications to these proteins at some stage of this uh, process of getting them into the nucleus. Okay, and these two enzymes are casein kinase delta, and then also casein kinase epsilon. Okay, right. So, in this video, the first thing I want to talk about then is I want to complete the uh, system, the circadian clock system, okay, by talking about the accessory loop that works uh, alongside this system that we just talked about, okay? And then I want to move on to the great question of how do all the cells that are using this system in a mammal's body actually keep it in synchrony with the light-dark cycles? Okay, so, let's start off then with this accessory loop. Okay, so this accessory loop is, as its name suggests, accessory. You do not need it, you can get rid of it, and it's, this system still works absolutely fine. This accessory loop just helps it out, basically. Okay, right, so this accessory loop then, it involves a protein that we haven't come across yet, okay, uh, which is called Rev and then herb alpha, okay, so reb herb alpha, uh, and sorry, I said reb herb, uh, rev herb, okay, so it is rev and then herb, don't switch the V and the B around like I just did, okay, right, so rev herb alpha, okay, now, uh, this protein, its gene is under the control of BMAL1 clock slash MPAS2 heterodimers as well, so I'll just draw this here. Okay, so we'll have uh, the rev herb alpha gene here in blue. Okay, so this is the rev herb alpha gene here. 
okay? And just like all of the period and cryptochrome genes, uh, it too has one of these special e-boxes in its gene control region. And therefore, when cycle, uh, sorry, I'm thinking of Drosophila, when the BMAL1 clock slash n pass 2 heterodimers are free at uh, 0 a.m. in the morning to 12 o'clock uh, at noon, um, then you're going to be getting these heterodimers binding to that e-box and promoting the expression of Reb, Reb Herb Alpha. Okay, right, so that means then that Reb Herb Alpha is actually going to oscillate up and down on a 24-hour basis in sync with period and cryptochrome levels. Okay, so let me just draw a graph which will show you Reb Herb Alpha levels. Okay, so once again, here is time on the x-axis going up in four hour periods, okay? And basically what we're going to see is, just like period and cryptochrome proteins, Rev herb alpha level will be very low during uh, midnight, and then it will be going up and up during the day, okay? Due to uh, the BMAL1 clock slash n pass 2 heterodimers driving its transcription. And then what will happen is we know at midday the period and cryptochrome proteins are going to come into the nucleus and stop the uh, BMAL1 uh, clock slash n pass 2 heterodimers from actually uh, operating anymore. Okay, so Rev Herb Alpha production will go down, and of course degradation will continue on, so now uh, degradation will dominate, okay, and you'll go back down like so. Okay, so this graph here is showing Rev Herb Alpha level throughout the day, basically. Okay, so it goes up and down in synchrony with when period and cryptochrome proteins go up and down. And there's something I probably didn't stress enough at the time when we were uh, discussing the major loop of this system, which is that uh, the BMAL1 clock slash n pass 2 heterodimers, they also regulate the expression of a huge number of different genes, okay, many effector genes, and that's how the cell's behavior can change on a 24-hour basis, just like uh, the uh, clock cycle heterodimers in the uh, Drosophila were capable of controlling the expression of a bunch of effector genes. Okay, so uh, the uh, BMAL1 clock slash n pass 2 heterodimers in mammalian cells will be uh, driving the expression of genes that you want expressed in the morning, basically. Okay, and that's how they can change the cell's behavior on a 24-hour uh, basis. Okay, right, so back to the accessory loop then now. This Rev Herb Alpha is one of these other genes that is uh, controlled by um, the um, BMAR1 clock slash n pass 2 heterodimers, and because the activity of these things is controlled on this 24-hour cycle by the period and cryptochrome proteins, Rev Herb Alpha level is also going to oscillate on a 24-hour cycle, basically. So what now does Rev Herb Alpha do? Well, basically, it's a transcription factor itself, okay? And it can bind to a sequence of organic bases in the DNA called the Rev response element, okay? So let me just show this. So let's say this is some gene here, okay? And in the gene control region then, in yellow here, you might have a special sequence of DNA, which is the sequence of DNA that Rev Herb Alpha is capable of binding to. Okay, and I'll draw the Rev Herb Alpha here. Okay, so this is representing Rev Herb Alpha. Okay, and this special sequence of DNA that the Rev Herb Alpha combines to is what's called the Rev response element. Okay, the Rev RE, like so. So this portion here stands for response element. Okay, so it's just a sequence of base pairs in the DNA. Okay, I don't know the exact sequence, uh, but it will be between four and ten base pairs, which the Rev Herb Alpha is capable of binding to, basically. Okay. Uh, and now, when the Rev Herb Alpha binds to the Rev response elements uh, in a 
collection of genes, gene control regions, it will affect the transcription rate of the downstream gene and therefore it will affect the expression of the downstream gene. Okay, now, uh, reverb alpha tends to repress the transcription of downstream genes when it binds to the rev response elements in the gene control regions of those genes. Okay, now one of the genes that reverb alpha actually has a rev response element in its gene control region is the gene for BMAL1. Okay, so let's say this gene now is the BMAL1 gene. Okay, so let's put this all together now. So reverb alpha, it combines to rev response elements which are present in the gene control regions of certain genes. It turns out that one of the genes that has a rev response element in its gene control region is the BMAL1 gene. Okay, therefore when rev herb alpha is high, uh, it will bind to the rev response element upstream of the BMAL1 gene and stop BMAL1 from being transcribed. So let's think about why that is actually going to be important. So we've seen that rev herb alpha is going to be highest at midday. What is happening at midday? Well, we know that the period in cryptochrome heterodimers enter the nucleus at midday and they sequester all of the BMAL1 clock n pass 2 heterodimers in the nucleus and stop them from activating the transcription of genes which have E boxes in their gene control regions. Okay? This is going to help in that because it's going to block any more BMAL1 being synthesized. Okay, because you might have wondered, there's a risk here that the um, period cryptochrome heterodimers can come into the nucleus. Okay, they can sequester all of the uh, BMAL1 clock n pass 2 heterodimers. Okay. Uh, but then why can't we just make more of those heterodimers, okay, to overcome the block, basically? Well, here is this accessory loop that is helping to prevent that, basically, okay? The reverb alpha is going to be coming into the nucleus when it's high as well, okay, when the period and cryptochrome come in, and it's going to block any more BMAL1 being produced. And BMAL1 is that essential component of the heterodimer, remember. BMAL1, you don't have a choice, it's the blue one. Clock and m pass, there's two degenerate ones that can both go into that position, but BMAL1 is utterly essential. So if you can't produce any more BMAL1, you can't produce any of these more of these BMAL1 clock slash M pass 2 heterodimers. Okay? And that means that the only uh, BMAL1 clock slash N pass 2 heterodimers that the nucleus is going to be able to have are the ones that it's already got and those are the ones that are now being sequestered by our period slash cryptochrome heterodimers basically. Okay, uh, so that's how this accessory loop then is going to help to uh, stabilize this system basically. It's not essential, you can do without it, but it just helps the main system uh, to control uh, the uh, email one um, clock slash m pass two heterodimers. Okay, right, so that now is the accessory loop uh, done. In the next video, what we will do is we will turn our attention on to discussing this great question of how do you uh, get this synchronization of these uh, transcriptional translational feedback loops that are present in peripheral cells within the body to the light-dark cycle.